Page 5 now, the trump G trade war. The United States and China are currently engaged in an all-out, full-scale PR battle. China effectively saying that the tariff dispute is not harming its economy and that it can sustain this economic combat for years. President Trump is saying that China is not doing that well and that the U.S. economy is in a much stronger position than the chi -coms. Our country is doing incredibly well. Uh, China is not doing well. If you look at the trade situation, uh, China just admitted yesterday that they've been a currency manipulator. First time they've ever been called out. Companies are moving out of China by the thousands, and our country is doing very well. We're going to see how it all works out. Uh, somebody had to do this with China because they were taking hundreds of billions of dollars a year out of the United States, and somebody had to make a stand. No, I think our country is doing really well. I think the market reaction is anticipated. I would have anticipated. I would have maybe anticipated even more, but ultimately it's going to go much higher than it ever would have gone because China was like an anchor on us. China was killing us with unfair trade deals. The people that allowed that to happen are a disgrace. China, what they were doing to us for years and years, taking hundreds of billions of dollars out, stealing intellectual property, targeting our farmers, all of that's ending, and they understand that. Now, of course, investors don't like the escalation of the trade war, a massive increase in U.S. tariffs, and in retaliation, China ceases to purchase U.S. produce. It's hardly music to the ears of anyone who cares about a free, vibrant, and open economy. However, this president is doing what no president had had the guts to do, and it's long overdue. Joining me now from Dallas, Texas, co-founder and chief strategist of GDP Advisors, Seth Denson. Seth, um, the president, it's interesting to hear him uh, talk about uh, China and, and businesses leaving uh, China because, uh, you know, he's got data that, that a lot of us don't have. But he's clearly uh, into the long term here. And, you know, he's talking about intellectual property and, and the big picture. And really, uh, this is almost a proxy war. This is, this is fighting a, a, a cold war, if you will, between the United States and China without firing a shot. That's, a, that's exactly right. Listen, the, the biggest uh, weapon, I think, in the president's arsenal right now is the economic trade situation, his ability to le levy tariffs. The challenge that you have, though, and what I'm actually glad to see the president doing is he's, he's almost putting politics aside and, and really saying, I'm going to do what's best, what I believe, for the American economy, for the long-term game for the American, not only consumer, but the innovator. The, the, the part of our society and our economic system that is delivering new goods and new ideas and new innovation, he's wanting to protect them, and I can appreciate that. But he's got to keep in mind the politics side of it, unfortunately, which is that this long-term trade war could impact the economy. Now, the, this posturing by China is fascinating to me, and, and really they're, they're threats. But they're empty threats, right? Because when you look at the synergistic relationship between the United States and China, clearly China needs the United States more than the United States needs China. Yet you have uh, the propaganda machine out of China right now saying, hey, hey, this is no big deal. We're devaluating our uh, currency. But hey, this is no big deal. We're in here for the long term. We can last 10 years. That's all poppycock, isn't it? Well, listen, the, the advantage that China has is that they control their currency, they control their market because of their form of government. We have a free market system, right? So uh, their, their thought process likely is that we, they have more levers to pull because they can penalize their people to the nth degree. But that being said, the United States of America is in a much stronger position economically, uh, and I think that we can outstand them. Meantime, the president, you know, of course, is, is still kind of jabbing at the Federal Reserve. Um, you know, insinuating that, hey, they, they got a little too aggressive. And, I, you know, I think if you look at the charts, if you look at the numbers, I would tend to agree with what the president's saying. Okay, so it's done. But the bottom line is, when you look at the environment that we're in right now, the economic environment, I think the president is seeing the same numbers we are, that 3% GDP is probably, probably, I'm not being a bad news bear here, but it's possibly not sustainable over the next, say, 12 months. That's right. Listen, we can't continue the the bullish market that we've had under this president's watch forever. That's just not realistic. I think the president has done a lot of really good things, uh, and, and the market is, is, is proving that. Um, you know, that being said, I think we've even talked before that the Fed got a little aggressive in their rate increases over last year, and I think the president's trying to push back, saying, hey, you, you move too much too fast, and the, the economy needs that buffer to try to manage things out and the volatility out over time. Right. 
and, and somebody sent me an email, a viewer did, and asking why the Fed cut rates. Well, because they see some of the data that we see, that uh, maybe they, they got a little bit too aggressive and, you know, the economy started to cool off a little bit. We're in the middle of a trade war. Hey, it's, it's not a time to be raising rates.